What is going on YouTube fitness family? Eric Janik here and I've got a good video for you today. So a lot of times we have limited equipment, specifically dumbbells only if you're at a, your home gym or at a hotel gym. A lot of times what you have at your disposal is dumbbells. So I'm gonna run you through an insane dumbbell only workout with in mind that you're not gonna have like 150 pound dumbbells at your disposal. So hope you guys enjoy this video. It's gonna be insane. If you're not subscribed to this channel, please do so. Right now, it would mean the world to me. Without further ado, let's get it. First exercise, what we're gonna do, grab a moderate dumbbell for you. I would say something you can do like very comfortably, like an incline dumbbell fly. So I'm just gonna grab 35. Idea of this first exercise is going to be just an overall chest activation and pre-exhaust before we get into our kind of heavier compound pressing. So what we're gonna do here is on this incline. I have kind of a curved incline here, but I would just use a regular incline if you have it. So what we're gonna do is going to rotate these to a 45 degree angle. We're gonna push this, block the shoulders back, arch the lower back. And as we come down, we're gonna bend the elbows at about, I would say 60 to 70 degree angle. So we're not at 90 and we're not completely out here, like closer to 180, we're right in the middle of that. And so what this is gonna do is really open up the chest. I wanna pull the elbows down and back and you can see how much my chest opens up and then we're gonna pull, fly back up. So there's nothing explosive about this movement. What we wanna do is really control the weight through the chest and get a really good stretch activation and then we're gonna drive out nice and easy through the chest. So we're not exploding out, we're gonna push consciously through the chest. So I'm trying to stretch every one of those fibers Get everything opened up. Rotating, see how the hands are almost supinated towards the ceiling. Elbows are tucked down towards the sides. The pull, shoulders are pulled back and the chest is nice and open. And then I wanna push up and through. And so like I said, the goal of this first exercise is to drive a tremendous amount of blood flow and open up that fascia. So we're gonna open up the chest and the shoulders so we have a, we're very comfortable once we get into those pressing kind of positions. So we're gonna run this. For 12 to 15 reps, really opening everything up, really feeling comfortable in that stretch position. The other thing is I would milk, meaning pause in that stretch position for one to two seconds, especially on this first one to two sets before pressing out. So I'm gonna shoot for like 12 to 15 reps on that. I'm gonna kind of work up, go for three sets. So I'll probably go 35 and then I would go like 45 or 35, 40 and then maybe 45. But I want you to gauge it based on that rate of perceived exertion. If you are getting to failure, let's say rep six or seven, don't go up and wait. You probably should be going down and wait realistically. You wanna shoot for that 12 to 15 reps. If you're starting to get sloppy, speeding up the reps, not feeling comfortable feeling shoulder pain, don't go up and wait. Just because you're going up doesn't mean it's gonna be more effective. It just means that you're probably at a higher risk of injury and you're gonna start utilizing other muscle groups that aren't your chest. So wanna be very focused. This is a chest day for us. And so we don't want to just move the weight up just to move the weight up. All right, second exercise, we have a, little, a lot of good blood flow now. Feel very comfortable in that stretch position. So now what we're gonna do is going to be a basically variant between a fly and a press. So it's almost a fly press in the sense that we're not, we're gonna be bending the elbows more at the bottom. So it's gonna be more of a press than a true fly. I'll show you how that looks. So not super heavy still. Like I said, I'm kind of designing this for you guys, knowing that you're not gonna be in a gym that has 100 pound dumbbells. It might go up to 60, 70, 80 maybe max. So what we're gonna do is use these 50s and utilize time under tension to make this a harder movement and maximizing range of motion. So we're going to come down similar to the first movement pattern, but we're going to keep it tighter to the body. So you see the first movement pattern is out here. This is gonna be here. So we're gonna be nice and tight to the body, big stretch, up and squeeze. So it's not a true press because we're not here. It's a slight in between of a fly and a press. We're still gonna pull those shoulders nice and far back. Really trying to feel at the bottom of my rep. As I come down, I wanna feel a stretch through every fiber in my chest before I press out. So you can see how nice and high I am up here, but still very comfortable for my shoulders, not feeling any impingement, any pain. So big stretch, pause and that stretch. Milk it, milk it, milk it, milk it. And then press out turn the dumbbells. So at the end of your rep, you wanna see this angle of your dumbbells. So kind of angled towards each other at about a 45, or this about a 90 degree between the two dumbbells. And then coming down, turning it kind of toward neutral at the bottom, big stretch. And then pressing out, squeezing. Same thing, three sets. 
If you wanna go down towards that ape rep range, if you're feeling like pretty fatigued, that's totally fine. But I'd say don't go any lower than eight. Keep it between that eight to 15. I like to shoot for close to that 12, um, just for me personally, but same thing as that first exercise, really focusing on that time under tension. Sitting in that stretch position, that's where they've shown that you get the most hypertrophy is providing load in that stretch position. Also, the thing to remember about dumbbells is they stack at the top. So from a vectors of force perspective, when you get to the top of your rep, that vector of force is coming straight down, right? So we got dumbbell, wrist, elbow, shoulder. So it's, it's right above you. So you basically, there's no tension on your chest here. Now, as we come out, the farther we get, from that center of gravity, the farther out, the more force and the more tension that dumbbell is providing. So that's why we want to sit wherever it is in that stretch position because you're providing the most force on the tissue and compounding that, you're putting force on the tissue in that stretch position where they've shown you're gonna get the most hypertrophy. So kind of double whammy in that perspective. So don't spend so much time here focusing on ooh, squeezing here. You're basically squeezing into nothing because you're stacking the joint here. Focus on milking it here. Milk, 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 milk. Push, squeeze. So that's gonna be exercise number two. And then we'll hop into the third exercise. All right, third exercise. Now we're gonna go into a rotation. So it's not a fly, it's not a press. It's basically holding that weight in the most stretched position for your chest and then working it around. So as we get lower, we're gonna get into that upper chest. As we come around, we're gonna get more into that pec minor through here and through that mid pec. So what we're gonna do is basically you're gonna hold that stretch position, we're gonna come all the way down and back, disengage the front delts, and we're just gonna rotate that weight up as high as you feel comfortable, and then down and around. And we're just gonna go for like eight to 10 super slow reps. So there's no like flying or pressing, it's just sitting in that stretch position. It's an insane, pump, crazy working set. You just gotta get really comfortable finding that stretch position and trusting your chest to take the weight. So you're gonna start in a fly position. You're gonna bring it down to the most stretch position possible. So here, and then we're gonna internally rotate, keeping the impetus of the chest squeeze, and then back out and around, big arch, back as far as you feel comfortable and then back and through. So I'm not coming up at the top, I'm just keeping, so this is constant tension on the chest. I'm not ever releasing tension throughout this whole set. And it's also very cathartic in the sense of, I'm working in the most stretched position, so I am also opening up the tissue as I train it, which is gonna keep me healthier in the long run because if I can be very strong in this length of position, that's where you're most likely to get hurt. So if I can be strong here, I'm less likely to get, God forbid, a pector or something like that when I do my heavier pressing, let's say next week or next chest workout. So I'm gonna go here, big stretch. Oh, internally rotate. Let's go two more. Ah. See how I keep the shoulders down and back so I don't let that front delt take over. Ugh. And you see how I shorten the rep a little bit as I get tired, so instead of reaching back behind me and letting the delt take over, I keep it in the chest. And only go as far back as I can feel comfortably keeping that impetus. And last one. Oh, fuck. Oh, and that burn is fucking unreal. Like the pump that you get from this, it's crazy. So you don't have to do the most traditional movements, sense of like, I have to bench press 500 pounds to get a big chest. You can see how much blood flow and activation and hypertrophy I'm driving just from something where I'm not even repping, I'm just holding it in that length and position. So you're getting a ton of motor recruitment, very low risk exercise, but also gonna open up the tissue and keep you long and healthy. So when you do your other compound movements, the other last point I'll make about this, if you can get strong, here, 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 really in that stretch position, where do you usually fail on a compound press? Most people don't fail from here to here. That's why most people can bench press, cheat reps, half reps, a lot of weight, but here, that's where you're most likely to fail and just get, just pinned because you're less strong here mechanically. So if you can start to work in that position, your compound movements are also going to 
inevitably increase. Second to last exercise, we're gonna superset with our last exercise. So since obviously we don't have as much weight at our disposal, let's say at a hotel gym or home gym, so I got 75s here. So what I'm gonna do is a narrow dumbbell press, supersetted with a deficit push-up. So I'll show you the first the press. So what I'm gonna do, biggest cues on a press, I wanna pull the feet back so that I can have a nice strong base. I wanna pull the shoulders down and in. I wanna rotate the dumbbells. A lot of people press like this, you're gonna get a ton of front delt activation, turn the dumbbells in, pull the shoulders back, arch the back, good foot drive, and then push out into the, the handle or the dumbbell should be in a V shape like this, if you were to look at it from my angle. Slow on the eccentric, pull the shoulders back, reach that chest towards the ceiling, and then push through, squeeze. So the biggest part of this press is gonna be that eccentric, the stretch, and then a nice controlled press through. So same thing here, focusing more on time under tension and that stretch, then really top end weight, pushing through, squeeze, slow on that eccentric, we're gonna go for anywhere from 10 to 20, depending on how strong you are in this movement and also how high your weight goes. So if you only have dumbbells like the 40, obviously you can do more. But as I get to the failure on that, I'm gonna pick it up. I'm gonna take this, use these same dumbbells. I'm gonna put them here. Let's say where, so if you were to go up on the dumbbells, you would be able to be in a nice push position where these dumbbells are gonna be right underneath your nipple line. We're gonna get a good stretch here and then push out, squeeze. So I'm gonna internally rotate my hands so my elbows can be nice and tight to the body. And then I'm gonna push through, squeeze. So the reason for the deficit, see I get more stretch than a traditional push-up, and I'm just a little bit more comfortable with the hands than if I was to be flat on the floor. I get to kind of rotate them around the dumbbell like that. So I'm gonna get big stretch, chest nice and proud, chin up, and then push through, squeezing at the top. And the pump on those two together is like astronomical. And I think people sleep on this type of movement because it is body weight. But when you pair that with a press and then you add a deficit, meaning you're going deeper than you could if you were just doing push-ups on the floor, it makes them that much more difficult. And so we're getting really good exhaustion. We're taking things to those failure points, which at the end of the day is one of the most important stimulatory factors of driving growth. So just because I'm using 75s doesn't mean I can't drive the failure, especially when I'm supersetting and using another intensity technique by pairing these two exercises together, getting minimal rest between them. So that is my top five dumbbell only chest exercise for you. I think if you did this at a hotel, it would absolutely torture you, take like 40 minutes max. to have a create chest pump for the pool, wherever you're going. But I hope you guys love this video. I hope you guys are enjoying the series. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Comment below what you guys wanna see more of. Without further ado, I'll see you guys in the next video.